cultural bridge. Mm -hmm. They talk about um, having uh, visions because they they uh, take drugs and they have these visions. And they said they would go up to a gate and they would see the the enemy of God. They called they called God Yahweh, the enemy of God, because the spirits would bring them to the gate and say that is where you could never enter. Right. But when the missionaries started hearing this, they, they seen that as an obvious cultural bridge. This is the common grace of God that the spirits would be willing to show them that much that they would see more than we would have ever seen. Right. And 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 depicted never having reading the book of Revelation, but they speak of the same things. And he says, no, 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 that's not the enemy. God, that is God. And there is a way in and it is through his son. So I love that. You can go into anywhere, into different cultures and subcultures, and even our, our children, especially when we watch uh, uh, movies. It is an, it is such an obvious bridge because there, it's getting more blurred now where there are no villains, that people are just misunderstood. And it's really, it's really not terrifying. I think it's disgusting. It was before that there was a clear good and there was clear yeah. bad and 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 good always won in the end, right? And and there was a good clear bridge, but now it's not that case anymore. So, but by the common grace of God, we could still find bridges between what our children are watching, our youth are watching, um, that we watch as adults. I mean, even even horrible things. I tell you, I love watching horror movies. I don't watch them uh, much anymore because my wife. I was terrified of them. Um, so we don't watch them, but it, I enjoy watching them because there's a lot of things in there that are not true that brings up excellent conversation about what is true, right? All right, so let's move on from there. Any questions, comments, complaints? All right. I, I lost my, I don't know. Ah. I can say I think it got stuck all together. Hopefully this video works a little bit better. Where are you hiding? I know they killed your children. They? You. Your kind. Your blood. No! Apologize. I, I seen some of you prefer not to watch it, and I will be more more sensitive in the future about showing uh, clips like that. And, and if if it's something that you'd rather not see in this class, I'm serious. If it's something you'd rather not see in this class, let me know personally, um, because I I will not put it in there. It's not necessary. We don't need it. Um, we have a good enough an imagination. We don't need that. Um, but for the youth that put it in, because then they're like. They're in Bobao and they're looking at it like, ah, and hopefully they can connect uh, the illustration with uh, the message. But there's a number of things that this dragon, first of all, I love the voice that they picked with the dragon. 
This woman's uh, from the Middle East and she has that that voice. Sounds like my mother-in-law, actually. Uh, <laughs> and which is sad because my mother-in-law suffers from uh, acid reflux. So her voice, she not only has, she has a very strong voice, but she also, uh, but it's very raspy like that. Right. And uh, But the, the but fact that they chose her to, um, yeah, she's still here. She's leaving next Sunday. Um, so, uh, but th the things that he said, and again, that, that cultural bridge to be able to talk about the gospel using uh, movies and just what people are already watching. And so you don't have to, you don't have to feed this to somebody. They're already, right? Not everybody, but most, uh, many are. It says, um, you will feel my pain, right? The dragon puts his uh, little claw or her claw into her side says, you will feel my pain. And in the movie, um, they... Uh, kings before her from that kingdom came and killed the three her uh, their three uh, little eggs. And, uh, they were just born and they killed them and they didn't know the dragon was there. Now they have to appease the dragon and they bring a sacrifice to him and it has to be from the bloodline. So the bloodline they don't want to kill off their own, so they keep marrying women off to the, his son and they uh, they cut their their hand as a, a, a ritual and they they. So that, that his blood goes into her, supposedly, right? But it's not. It doesn't actually go in. But anyway, um, so that's why the blood, the dragon could smell the bloodline on her. But it is fascinating. He says, she says, I'm not one of them, right? We all belong to the bloodline of Adam. We can't deny that we are sinners. Even if we say we don't are sinners, God says we are sinners. And we are sinners not, not just by what we do, but by default, because we come from the same blood. We come from descended from Noah, Noah from Adam, right? And Adam sinned, right? And that sin was carried on and passed to um, the, all the world. And then um, she says, or the dragon says, accept your fate, right? I have accepted mine, right? The dragon knows he can't say that to us. He might lie to people and say that to us, but the serpent, the dragon, the devil, he can't say that to us. He knows his fate, but that does not have to be a human being's fate. Jesus became human so that he can die for humans, so that we can share that gospel. We can live out that gospel so that um, there's a proverb that says, like the, like the legs of a lame man, so is the proverb in the mouth of a fool, right? A, a, a lame man has legs, but they are worthless to him. Mm -hmm. So you, even sharing the gospel without living out that gospel, makes it weak. The gospel is not weak. But people will refuse to listen because of the way we live. This is why we're going through this discipleship series. When you look today, he'll, he'll go over the exercises again. Look at those exercises. Um, write them down. Put them somewhere and think about these things. God is not going to do these things for you. He's calling you to do them. He will give you the grace and he will do them in and through you. But you have to set your mind. You have to do you have to do these things. He's not going to do them for you, okay? And then the last thing she says is, uh, um, your, your kind, I can't even read my own writing. I wrote it so fast. It, it's not innocent. Your kind was never innocent. Please. Yeah, your kind was never yeah, innocent. To me. And he's absolutely right. You know, the, the devil can say that to us. He can look us right in the face, and he is the accuser of the brethren. He stands in the presence of God, accusing you and he doesn't have and here's the funny thing not funny the sad the, the horrible thing he doesn't have to make stuff up for each one of us in here as much as 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 holy as we think we are as sanctified as we think we are when if you really allow the spirit of god to speak to you he'll let you know where you fail and where you need help and it's not to condemn you it's to lift you up it's a doctor examining you and telling you there is something wrong with you it's deadly. It's going to kill you, right? But I'm here to help you, right? The Holy Spirit is here to help us. He's not here to condemn us. And I love that about God, right? But the devil doesn't need to make things up. He just can just look at our life and just tell God as it is. Look at Miguel. Look at Miguel. Look at, let me play this back for you. Look at his life, right? Yeah, and he's the accuser of the brethren. So uh, the war in heaven. In uh, page 210 of your book, uh, The War in Heaven, it says, uh, imagine his anger when he, in the first, uh, second paragraph, 
Imagine his anger when he sees the gates of heaven closed with the saints he has persecuted on earth, now standing before the throne of God in the spotless beauty of Jesus. He sees them exalted above the angels as brothers of Christ, though they had committed many of the same sins as he. This is a reality. We, we are proud. We, we are our accusers. We do the very same things that he does. He knows that he will be there forever. He also knows, he knows that they will be there forever. Talking about the saints in the presence of God. He also knows where he will be forever. No wonder he is furious. No wonder he is furious. Um, so it's not enough for Satan to inhabit a man who will, uh, did I advance this on accident? I did. All right. The serpent sees the saints exalted above the angels, angels as brothers of Christ, though he had not committed many, though they had committed many of the same sins as he. He knows that they will be there forever. He also knows where he will be forever. No wonder he's furious. And the Bible tells us in Revelation 12, 7 through 9, and there was a war in heaven and his angels warring war with the dragon. And I love this. It says there was a war in heaven and his angels warring, waging war with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels waged war, and they did not prevail, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven, mm -hmm. and the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who is called the devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, he was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. So three different times it mentions his angels, twice speaking of Satan's angels, and then once speaking of God's angels, right? Um, but we have Michael and Lucifer, and and I have to go back. I mean, let me have let me just look at my Bible. Wrote, uh, Revelation chapter twelve, verses seven through nine. Mm -hmm. But he says here, and there was war in heaven. Ah, there's a word missing. Um, when I copied and pasted, for some reason, I always have to double check it because it skips words and it doesn't. But there is and this is what I thought, right? And there was war in heaven. Michael. And his angels. It's interesting. Michael and his angels. Right? And then the dragon and his angels. Now, now think about it. They were created at the same time. Lucifer's position was higher. He was the light bearer of God. Right? And Michael had a, a subservient position to Lucifer. But now they are fighting against each other. And you can imagine... Um, I, I don't know what heaven is like. The Bible doesn't tell us what it's like, um, but I've watched plenty of movies. Um, no, just being silly. But you, you think of, of your own, and, and okay, Pastor Trujillo, some of you asked for his testimony one day and he'll share it with you. He got stabbed by his own brother. All right? Do you think that, do you think his brother accused him of, say, he thought he did something, uh, blah, 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 and says that he ended up stabbing his own brother, right? You, do you think Pastor Trujillo was, was thinking to himself, well, I hate you. I don't want to see you again. That is your brother. Even though you're fighting against your own brother, there's still a love that exists there. And I imagine that same love exists among the angels. That even though they, they, they are called to do what they're doing, that they're still the agonizing in their spirit that you are looking at someone created just like you. Someone who, who you know that by the grace of God, as an elect angel, how Paul tells Timothy, as an elect angel, you, it wasn't because of you. It was by the grace of God that you did not fall, that you not you did not go with the third, and now you are called to fight against this individual, right? And he has re the devil has reason to hate us. We sin just like him. But Jesus did not become an angel to save angels. Jesus became a human to save humans. Yes. Mike. Um, yeah, that, I, it was interesting uh, that, um, you know, when, when um, Michael was contending with Satan over Moses' body, that yes. he did not attack Satan in his own strength, his own power. Yes. But that, you know, he, he still respected Satan's uh, uh, spiritual authority over him. But that through Christ and through God, yeah. you know, as, as he approached him and wrestled with Satan. So it was like, you know, there's still that understanding. I, and I think it's very similar to like how David, even though he was being pursued in, in with, uh, with Saul, Excellent. That he still respected 
Saul's position as uh, authority in the McDonald's and Chosen. You know, but the, and I think that there's a change. Nietzsche points out that in the end times, that that that, that, that when he is cast out of, out of heaven, that, that that Michael will be there, and and he will be the one executing, you know, the um, God's plan. Yeah, and it, it is fascinating when you read the book of Daniel, chapter twelve. I think it's verses one and two, and it says, "And Michael stood up." It's like this is this is it. This is time. It is the time. Michael, this is the 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 prince over Israel. When you read the book of Daniel, it is amazing. If you were you you'd run out of highlighter if you ran every time you, you met an angel in there. Angels are very, very prominent in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. And when they talk they talk about them as princes, the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece, the prince of Rome, the prince of Israel. And the prince of Israel mm -hmm. is of Michael the Archangel. Okay. So uh, let's move on. I can't wait to beat him too. Huh? Yeah. 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 This, like, this, is, tall. yeah. this <laughs> is this is the, the depiction here. And it's interesting that um that he, it's cropped out in this circle because it looks a whole lot better. If it's the whole thing, it's it's an angel, very effeminate looking, very thin. In his little armor and a pink flowing robe, and uh, um, with a, a hook and, and a sword, and casting sword. down the devil. The devil doesn't one look red, and with these tiny horns that he could, these tiny wings that he could do nothing with, right? And like you said, these are powerful beings, right? A single angel in the Old Testament killed 185 opposing soldiers that were coming up against Israel overnight. 185,000, right? So just imagine that these two prime angels, first angels, archangels, right? All right, let's move on. Um, it's not enough for Satan to inhabit a man who will claim to be God. Verse uh, uh, 211 and 214 is where you'll find these. Let me see. Ah, but I am on page 212. It says, by the time Antichrist appears, the world will be ready to deify a leader if he appears to have what it takes to unite the world and bring in an era of peace. It's not enough for Satan to inhabit a man who will claim to be God. The master deceiver will actually try to duplicate the three members of the Trinity. These three personalities will do their best to try to confuse the world by pretending to be the true and living God. Right? It, I, I wouldn't be surprised, and I haven't seen anything on the internet, um, not that I'm looking for it, but I wouldn't be surprised if people will look at Trump and say, he's the Antichrist. Look at, he's trying to unify the world. He got shot, and he still survived. And they try and, people try and, and make connections that are not there, right? They make it, but then someone else will hear it and says, look at what the Bible says. Whoa, that's true. That is him. And in the end, it has to be somebody. It has to be somebody. And it will be, it will be a charismatic leader that brings not just a, we'll, we'll get to that, one world government, one world religion, we'll get to that. But here I wrote, um, uh, let me finish reading. It's not enough for Satan to inhabit a man. He will claim to be God. The master of the sea will actually try to duplicate the three members of the Trinity, these three personalities will do their best to try and confuse the world by pretending to be the true and living God. So in there, he goes on to describe the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, right? It's called the false prophet. Other places in there, it was called the second beast, right? So in, in God, there is one being, he's one what, and three who, right? What is God? God is God. By nature, he is God, right? But he exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Three, a co-equal, co-eternal, right? There's so many different ways you can explain it, but they're they're very separate. And this is why they are uh, one, one God and three individual persons. But yet this is all connected, right? This is all connected, right? And then in this unholy trinity... You have the dragon, and you have the beast. So he takes the place of God the Father, and the beast 
takes the place of the Son because he is incarnate. This is a human being. This is Satan. This is a human being that is empowered by Satan in the same way that Jesus came, not in his own power, but in the power of God, right? And then this false prophet is not going to exalt himself, but the false prophet points to the beast. And he comes with wonders and with signs and powers and wonders, the very same three words that the Bible speaks of Jesus' ministry. Are those the things, signs, miracles, I don't know, whatever the, whatever the three are, right? Uh, the false prophet. So we have this. And it says, at last, um, there will be religious unity. At last, let me see if there's anything I underlined there so that uh, we would read together. I don't, I don't think I did. But at last, there will be religious unity. The dragon and the beast will receive the worship of the world. Now, notice what it says. The dragon and the beast will receive the worship of the world. What about the false prophet? You know that this is the same language that is used of Jesus and his father. They are the one that are exalted. They are the one that sit on throne. You don't hear that of the Holy Spirit. It's not that the Holy Spirit is in God, but the Holy Spirit is also not jealous. Right? He's okay pointing people. Jesus said, you can blaspheme me. You can blaspheme the Father. But if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that will never be forgiven. All right? Isn't that, isn't that amazing? Right? But, and, and, and he said, I, I did not come to exalt. He said, no, he said, the Spirit will not exalt himself, but he will point people to me. Right? This is, this is the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and this is how we should be. As we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, that it doesn't become about us when someone walks away from Bible study, from preaching. It shouldn't be, what a great class. It should be, what a great God. Right? And that speaks a lot to me and to Pastor Manrique. We, we're doing it wrong if you leave here and you say, excellent class. We want to draw your eyes to the God of the Bible. We want to draw your eyes to the truth that God has preserved for us. The exercise of Bible study, the exercise of preaching is to let God do his work through his word. This is why he constantly, this is why we, we value expositional preaching here at Emmanuel Bible Church. Because you can have you can have a lot of different preachers and teachers and so, and they know a lot about the Bible and what they're saying is absolutely true. But they're not driven by the text. It's the power of the word of God. And so that God himself would be exalted, not the individual, not the character, not personality, not charisma, not charisma, which is what many people get carried away with. Okay. So, all right, let's move on. Questions, comments, complaints? At this point, Gabriel, you're tracking? You good? All right. I think uh, I'm just saying that yes. the, the, those, you know, it's not, you know, some preachers will preach you know, to the culture and 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 but it's the word of God that, that gives the preaching its authority. Yeah. You know, that unless you know if you if you don't expose or espouse the word of God, you're not preaching in authority. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it says uh this this next part from two fourteen to two sixteen, a very short section, but there's so much in there. Thank goodness. It says at last control. The, the vision of religious unity is what will propel the world to one world religion and one world government. It says uh, right in the, the first paragraph there, it says at last control, 214. According to Barna Research uh, report, about two thirds of Americans believe that the different religions of the world are actually worshipers of the same God. So they, there's already people already believe this. It says the vision of religious unity is what will propel the world, the one world religion and the one world government. Religion and politics will come together in one person. The science of mind and the science of economics will blend into unified world philosophy. If you have your, your book, turn to page 216, the last two paragraphs. Then it says, this then is the culmination to which all the various strands of religious unity are headed. Even the tributaries of satanic worship that we see today might be the very ones that will flow into a single river of occult uh, religion. 
Here is the apex of the godhood of man, right? The apex of the godhood of man. At last, the problems of the world will be overcome and with spiritual solutions. Under the guise of laudable slogans, the, the deification of a man will reach its most striking affirmations. All oppositions will be set aside and a new world order will be in place. For those who do not get on board, there will be intimidation, starvation, and liquidation. The devil will be in charge. And I put it in quotes, in charge, because he's still God's devil. He will not be in charge. He will be given charge, but he will not be in charge. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 13, verses 7 and 8, and it was given to him. He didn't take it. It is not his. It was given to him to make war with the saints to overcome them. Not just to make war with them, but to overcome them. This was God's goal. God knew this was going to happen, that they would stand as testimonies of God, right? It, and they would be killed. And uh, an authority was given to him, <laughs> given, not taken, not assumed, not inherent. It was given to him over every tribe, people, language, and nation. Also, uh, all who live on the earth will worship him. Everyone, listen, all and everyone, but then there's an exception, or, or it says, uh, uh, there's a caveat there, whose name has not been written in the foundation, it has been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life, who has, uh, in the book of life, in the life, wowzers, has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who has been slaughtered, right? Before. Time began. Space began. Before there was light, before there was anything, God knew that man would sin. God knew that he would send his son to die in the place of sinners. And God knew who would be his own. Those people, their names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life before the foundation of the earth. Right? Before. So if you're thinking, am I in? Am I out? Is, did I do something wrong? Is God going to throw me out of his family? You never did anything to get in. It was by the grace of God that he pursues you. By the grace of God that you receive them. It's by the grace of God that you're kept. It's by the grace of God that you will be in his presence forever. Okay? Uh, so, any questions, comments, complaints? Before we roll? All right. Overcomers. I think this is the last section. Yes. Uh, uh, 216 to 219. Uh, it looks like we're going to read right from the beginning. It says, whatever scenario, and I, I love the humility with which um, Erwin Lutzer started this chapter, because I know Erwin Lutzer's position, right? But yet he starts it with this. He says, whatever scenario we might adopt regarding the end times, it is clear that there are believers during the tribulation period when Satan, through the Antichrist, rules the world. Some would point to the existence of these believers as proof that the church will go through the tribulation period. They will be protected from the direct wrath of God, but suffer persecution and death at the hands of the dragon. My preference, which I found fascinating, I don't know if he did that on purpose or not, because he didn't say, according to my exegesis, my digging into the word of God, my, but he wrote, my preference is to believe that while the church will be raptured before the tribulation begins there will be a remnant primarily jews who will be saved during the tribulation period whichever scenario is adopted all are agreed that godly people will be challenged to overcome the beast right so yeah revelation 13 verses 9 to 10 says then i heard a loud voice in heaven saying now now not not after all this is done, now, not um, when there's a new heaven and a new earth, it's now. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ has come. Right? Now. At that, now it has come. Right? And you would think, oh, so everything's going to be good. No one's going to be hurt. No, no, no. These godly ones, they're about to be persecuted. They're about to go into this awful time. The devil has been casted down, and he's furious. And this is his last hurrah before he's thrown into the lake of fire forever. 
where he will be punished, where he will be separated from God forever. Right? Forever. It's not, it's not like I'm going to go be with my buddy so I can go party. Who wants to be with God? I'd rather go be with my friends in hell. Right? No, that's not the case. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to, it's not going to be anything good. Okay? He says, from there, he says, for the accuser of our brothers and sisters, um, uh, I think I uh, skipped the word there, has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night, and they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, because of the word of their testimony, and they did not love their life, even faced with death. So, how does this believing remnant counteract the attack of Satan? Just as we do, right? It's the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony. It's not like, well, my testimony is powerful. It is not. It is the gospel that's powerful. Your testimony needs to and must contain the gospel of Jesus Christ because it points people to the blood. It points people to Jesus Christ. So the power there is the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and the last one, I love the way he wrote it, the gift of martyrdom. The gift of martyrdom. Most of us, the moment we, anything that is uncomfortable in our lives, we want to pray it away. We want to pray it away. Rather than thinking, okay, God, you brought this into my life. How, what do you want me to do? How do you, how will you be glorified in me the most? Right? For some people, one of the hardest things for them is to not have any persecution. Is for everything to go good, right? And I've shared this a billion times. I'll share it again. My brother-in-law being one of them. He's like a Joseph. Whatever he puts his hands to, it's, it, it, it succeeds. And the, the, guy, the guy wants to suffer for Christ, but can't suffer if his life depended on him, right? His, bear, his cross to bear is having everything and wanting nothing. He has literally emptied out his bank account so that he would have nothing. And then God not only puts it back, he puts it back with extra. Right? And you're like, well, I'll trade that with what I got anytime. Right? And it's and, and that's the reality, right? The grass is always greener on the other side. Right? It seems like that's not most, I'm sure most of us are thinking here, that's not real suffering. It's it's killing him. He hates that. He wants to suffer. Right? Right, but he, but he's also short-sighted. Right, he needs to see that I have been, I have been blessed in order to be a blessing. Keep being a blessing. This is for, this is what God has for you. Right. If 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 everybody in here, they said, all right, we're all going to be missionaries. Who's going to fund these missionaries? Right. We're here because God has worked for us to do here. So that we can give, so that a portion of what we give goes towards missionaries, so that they can do what they're doing somewhere else, right? Because we can't, we can't do it all. We can't all be outside of the country missionaries, but we are all on mission. Right? This is something that Pastor Manrique has been made very, very clear over and over and over through his discipleship series. So at the end there. It says, if anyone, oh, the gift of martyrdom. This is a gift. This is not a punishment. We're not, not, God, what did I do? I don't deserve this. No, you don't deserve this. But by the grace of God, it is a gift that you would stand, suffer, and die for the name of Jesus Christ. Now, most of you are like, I don't want that gift. I'd rather have his son-in-law's gift. Right? But that's good. All right, so last one here. It says, if anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone destined for, again, words missing. If anyone is destined for captivity, to captivity he goes. If anyone kills with the sword, with the sword he must be killed. Here is the perseverance of the faith of the saints. Right? God is saying, this is why you're here. This is what you're going to go through. And go through it. Right? So this is my, my big idea for you today. It's not the first time we use it, but I thought it was... Uh, it, I thought it was important. I reworded the last two words. There will be saints who die for his glory. Would you consider it an honor to be part of his story? Would you consider it an honor? Whether, whether you believe a pre-tribulation rapture, this guy, listen, there are people that 
whatever the Bible describes in the book of Revelation, all it means is that it's worldwide. Right now, people are dying for Jesus Christ. The fact that we have a Bible in our hand means that somebody died so that we can have this in our hand in our own language. In our own language. So don't just think revelation, but now, right? You, this may be coming, right? This this idea, you 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 look at politics and and the the taking away of religious freedom, the attack. The, the, there are pastors in the United States now that have to answer, um, and especially in Canada, that have to answer as to what what they are going to preach, and they're examining that what they have preached, and it could mean jail, and it could mean other types of persecution, right? So these are the things that are coming, and the question is, would you consider it an honor to be part of this story, right? Yes. Did you say in Canada? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, the. Canada's, you know, very, very, uh, 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 what is it? Progressive, very. It, yeah. It, there, there are things happening there. Mm -hmm. And even when we talk about um, children transitioning to um, uh, another uh, sex, gender. right? Another gender without parents knowing, without parents know, being notified, without parents' uh, consent, right? There are things that are being, there. I believe it was in Canada. I could be wrong. I believe it was in Canada where a child, the parent wanted something different medically and they weren't allowed to take that child home. The child had to stay in the hospital by the government's um, mandate, right? Rather than the parents deciding, no, I know what's best for my child, I will take And this is not about uh, um, uh, protecting the child, it's that they preferred what they wanted for the child rather than what the parents wanted for the child, right? And and for me, that that's a that's a worse fate than death. That someone else would decide what's going to happen to my child than for me to suffer. Right? For me to suffer, that's that's personal. It's me. It's like it, this is super gross, but I'm going to say it. Right? When my kids were small, I would do this all the time. When my kids were small. And they were all stuffy. I used to suck the boogers out of their nose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never coming back. <laughs> and um, we were talking about something with my my young my eldest daughter, and uh, it was something that one of her sons was going through or something, and we were talking about wanting to like take it from them. And she's like, "Yeah, that would be great if we could." I go, "You know, used to suck the boogers out of your nose just like to hear you breathe better." She's like, "That's disgusting." But thank you. <laughs> um, so, anyway, so you guys ever talk to me and you say this guy's got booger breath you know <laughs> all right so i that, never did that but i always said i wanted to take them to the fitness exactly exactly you always want to take your kids to the amen all right let us pray father thank you for uh, our time together and i pray that as um as we conclude, as we make our way down, Father, we, we've heard things here. We're going to hear things in, in our time of, of corporate worship through, through song and through prayer and through the, 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 the expository preaching of your word. And um, I pray that you would meet us where we're at. Help us to take these things in. That they wouldn't die right here, but that we would be reminded of this truth and that we would gnaw at it throughout the week and you will meditate on these things that you will be glorified and what we will be edified in Jesus name Amen. Amen. all right my brothers and sisters in the